can you provide a little bit more details on your project and how you plan about to go create this predictive model? So there were three uh, important things that were proposed in the project. Uh, so the first project, first first aim of the project was to understand the the white matter connectivity. So so what happens is uh, so brain consists of the gray matter which makes the decisions and the white matter that takes the decision from that region to another region. So in 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 the classical uh, neurodegenerative disorders, people believe uh, people focus more on the gray matter. So, but then there has been a recent uh, uh, inflow that this is also white matter can also be a problem. Now. So then people have studied white matter story in in this Parkinson's disease problem. So now one of the uh, techniques that people use in in studying white matter is uh, something called a diffusion MRI. So which tries to understand the water diffusion along the tracks. So uh, there are two things that we can measure from diffusion MRI. One is the voxel wise, meaning the regional differences in the organization. And the second is the, uh, the connectivity, meaning how this uh, white matter connects to different gray matter part. There are two things that can uh, that diffusion MRI can potentially help us understand. So in this project, we will try to fuse both of these things. In the, in the regional, measure, uh, regional measure, we want to go beyond the conventional measure because the conventional measure is something which is biased, meaning it assumes that every uh, every region that we image in the MRI has only one sort of uh, fiber tract. But that is not true because the brain is very uh, small and there are a lot of regions connected. So every voxel should have more than one crossing fiber, more than one type of fiber in the brain. So then we come up with this new technique called as a Nordi model or diffusion ketosis model or correcting for free water. So we want to understand which model actually is much, much better suited to understand the white matter organization, this organization that can help predict dementia. That is one part of the project. The second part of the project is to understand the connectivity, meaning the if if the white matter regional differences do occur or they don't occur, let's say if they are white matter regionally, they are fine. Parkinson's disease dementia is very similar to uh, who is not who is not getting dementia. If they are not different, then then maybe it's a connectivity issue. So then we want to understand if there's a connectivity which is a problem, not the local problem. But in the connectivity, we want to understand from both the gray matter story, meaning the functional MRI, and the white matter story, the diffusion MRI. So we want to confuse both of them together to under to build a complete to build a complete model of the of the brain of the connectivity of the brain. It is not really connectivity, but it is the uh, we, we, we we hope it gives the connectivity of the brain, but it is not it is not very simple. There's there so many complex things going on. And the third thing is to combine all this uh, MR story with the the blood story and the CSF because people have shown that there is some genetic story that can affect Parkinson's disease and maybe there is some uh, there is a gene called a LARC2 which is uh, which is shown to be predictive of dementia. So we want to understand if we we, we put this if, if this participant has this white matter story and there's some problems in this uh, this MR story, then we combine them with the genetic story, then can we predict this uh, Parkinson's disease in a more uh, in more confidently than compared to if you only use the MR or if you only use the CSF. So we want to combine everything together and build up a model. But it also comes with own challenges because uh, once we you have so many variables, we, we cannot have so many, so many no, patients because we are limited by the uh, the patients that we can imagine, we can, we can scan within the scope of the project. So we want to come up with this new uh, uh, innovative way or creative way to, to somehow stop this or to, to reduce these variables in such a fashion that we do not discard those uh, explainable variables and we keep all those explainable variables in addition to all those variables that may uh, correspond to dementia. So there is a, so that is where the project is uh, is designed for to come somehow build up a mathematical model to, to, to the number of participants, even though they are less, we can still make up a model that can predict dementia.